Hey guys! In today's video, I'm going to show you how to paint two different landscapes using gouache. Don't forget to make sure notifications are turned on by clicking on the bell and by adjusting the settings. And for a chance to get a shout out and to win arts and craft supplies in my ongoing giveaway, comment down below hashtag magnification squad in the first 24 hours. For more information, please check out the description box down below. Let's start with the skies and the clouds in each painting first. Begin by applying a little bit of blue colored paint onto the very top area of the paper. And then load up your brush with a little bit of water and start distributing the paint all the way down to the bottom to create a gradient effect. Move the brush from one side to the other and evenly distribute the paint. We just want to create a slightly darker area at the top that goes slighter and lighter a little bit. Here I'm going to use a flat brush because I find it's a lot easier to create a nice flat wash. Next, to create the white clouds, take a clean wet brush and start lifting off the paint by soaking up the color into the clean brush. Simply move the brush in a circular motion to create the shape of a cloud and while you do that, dip the brush onto the tissue paper and clean it from time to time. You don't have to remove all the paint from the paper, you still want to see a little bit of the blue color here and there so the clouds look three-dimensional. Once you created the base for the clouds, you can now take a little bit of white gouache and go over the top areas of each cloud to make these areas even brighter. Also, add the white paint to areas underneath here and there to create a fluffy shape in the clouds. Next, mix a little bit of blue and yellow color paint with lots of white gouache and a little bit of water and apply it right below the white areas in the clouds. These are going to be the shadows. The contrast between these two main colors will make the clouds look more three-dimensional. To soften the edges between the colors, simply dry off your brush and carefully go over the edges to blend them out. This is only one of the ways how to paint clouds and only one of the ways how clouds can look. And now we can move on to the second painting. By the way, these paintings are inspired by Studio Ghibli and they're amazing artists. Let me know in the comments below what other sceneries or paintings you would like me to recreate. For the second painting, we are going to create a sunset scenery and make the clouds look a little bit more dramatic by adding lots of different colors and a lot more contrast. Here I'm going to use purple colored paint that I mixed together with blue and a little bit of red color paint. And with a little bit of water, I simply distributed it the same way as we did in the first painting. I also added a little bit of magenta and yellow color paint underneath and blended them together to create a nice green effect between these three colors. Now we want to create the same base for the clouds as for the first painting so we have more room to play around with. Lift off some of the paint by using a clean white brush and a tissue paper. Here the clouds will be a lot more dramatic and look a little bit different, but you can create a similar pattern and shape as in the painting above. Once you create the base, you can go ahead and add white gouache to the top areas again, and from here we can build up the intensity and add more colors to it. Since in the painting we are going to create a sunset, I'm going to use yellow, orange and purple and make them look a little bit more pastel looking by mixing in lots of white paint. To build up the dramatic look, I would start with the lighter colors first and then add darker colors to the sides where the clouds get less light. So here for example, the sun goes down on the left side of the clouds and the clouds on the right are further and further away from the point. So here I'm going to add different shades of purple and make them darker and darker. Since you can reactivate gouache, don't worry if you're not completely happy with the way it looks yet. You can always go back later and work on it until you're happy with the result. Alright, let's move on to the second part of the paintings and that's the trees, mountains and all the good stuff. For the mountains, mix the same color as we used for the shadows in the clouds, just use a little bit less water and apply the paint just by covering half of the lower part of the painting and by creating different heights of the mountains. This is going to be the base. Next, mix in a little bit more blue color paint to the light green color to make it darker and go over the layer again. Now you want to apply the paint following the shape of the mountain. So for example, the left side of the mountain is slightly diagonal from the left to the right side. And the right side of the mountain is leaning towards the left side. But you can make the shape of the mountain the way you like it, of course. 
and to add more dimension and make the pattern of the mountain look more interesting, you can also add a little bit of purple to a few areas and blend everything slightly in. Let's move on to the hill full of grass and flowers. Here I mix a lime green color with green and yellow color paint and just simply cover the lower right corner of the paper. And to make this hill look less boring, we can now add a little bit of darker and lighter areas by adding dark green and white color paint. First dab on slightly darker shade of green here and there to create a nice textured look. And instead of painting each blade of grass, you can flatten your brush by simply pushing the bristles together to make them flat and then you can use it to dab on darker green shades on the paper to add a few details in the grass. I also added a little bit of white and yellow areas here and there. In front of the mountains we can now add a few trees. For this step, load up your brush with dark green color and apply them in the shape of a few hills like that. And then go over these areas with a few lighter shades of green and white to create dimension. The fun part here is that we don't want to be super accurate and focus on making everything super detailed. We just want to create a hint of that by focusing on the main shapes and be messy with the paint application. I also went ahead and added a few flowers to the grass hill to make it look more interesting. And you can make them however you like. Now for the second painting, we are going to make everything a little bit darker because it's a sunset and we want to create another type of mood compared to the first painting. To create trees here, I started by creating the base first using a dark shade of green. And from here I added the light reflections. Since the sun is on the left side, I added different shades of green and brown to the left side of each tree. This way we can make this flat wash of green paint into a three-dimensional looking forest. And then you can add even more highlights and shadows until you are happy with the way the trees look. Just step on the paint and don't think too much. By the way, for all the paintings I only use a little bit of water but it always depends on the way you want or like to paint. I'm still new to this medium so I'm still experimenting with the ratio. Okay, so below the trees I also added a field by using different shades of green and brown colors again. I was rather messy and didn't try to make it super neat. I just focused on having a few darker areas right below the trees and here and there on the field to create shadows. And then I did the same with lighter shades to create a few light reflections of the setting sun. And from here I just went back over all the paintings and adjusted a few areas. I made a few areas a little bit lighter, blended a few colors a little bit more and just changed things until I was happy with the result. I'm really happy I discovered gouache for myself because it's so fun to use and I love that you can use it like acrylics or oil and still be able to reactivate the paint and use similar techniques like with watercolors. And this is the final result. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below if you would like to see more gouache tutorials and what other things you would like me to paint in the future. And now it's time to announce the winners of the May giveaway. And the winners are Sanjoti Patil, Galaxy of Art, and Castle Girl. Congratulations! The winners will be contacted through YouTube comments, so please check your messages. I really hope you enjoyed this video and find it helpful. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up to support this channel. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and to click on the bell to get notified when I upload a new video on Thursdays and on Saturdays. Thank you so much for watching guys, have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Bye!